All right, I'm going to ask you to mute your microphones and we are going to we are going to begin. All right, so we have a very good cohort at this time, 9.30. So that's great. That's a great start to the proceedings. All right, so again, a very uh, well, good morning to everyone and a very warm welcome to all persons present here on the, in the Zoom platform. Of course, as things progress, we will have these sessions in the future. Uh, hopefully, we will be having a face-to-face -face sort of engagement. So, uh, good morning and a very warm welcome to the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, albeit in the virtual space but I'm extending a very warm welcome to you. And let me just, you know, when we're putting these sessions together, there are, we have various networks that we engage in putting the sessions together. So before I highlight specifically some of these networks that we would have engaged in planning this session, let me first start by introducing myself. So I am Maxine Fagan. I am the manager, communication and customer service here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. And some of the networks that we would have engaged, so I'm, I'm extending a very special welcome um, to those persons who would have come to us in this session um, through the Social Development Commission, their local economic development program. And also we have persons on, online on board coming through um, Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, the 4-H Movement, Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, the Scientific Research Council and their persons who are coming to us here through our own client services program. And so I really do appreciate you taking the time, recognizing the importance of coming to this session. And so I must say to you, we do not take your time for granted because time is a very, very precious commodity. And so we do really appreciate um, you, as I said, and it's an investment, it's an investment, it's an invest a very important investment of time. So you'll be here with us for another hour, two hours or so maximum, it might be less. And so again, thank you for the investment of your time, your very precious time. All right, so we are going to um, start firstly. We're going to be giving you a little background because it's good um, when we attend these sessions. I mean, you're not here physically at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, but we want to give you a little insight into what we do here at the BSG. So you're going to be seeing a video about eight minutes or so, um, and that really is intended to give you some insight into what we do here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica because you may be very familiar with the name and you may think that you in fact know what the Bureau of Standards Jamaica does, but I am sure you may be surprised by some of the information that we will be presenting here in this very short video. Now, before I go to that video, however, let me just say firstly, why, just to give you some further insight or insight into why we actually decided to, um, to have this session here today. So, we do recognize that persons may be at various stages along their business journey. And persons may in fact be at a particular stage. So we have found that there are persons who are starting out, that they're very fresh, very new, and they want to get as much information as possible. So we have those persons on the platform. There may be persons on the platform who, have, who are further advanced in their journey. And they may in fact be you know, at the stage where you're just about to embark on registration. But as a facilitator of business development and trade, which is what we do, which is the current role of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. So as facilitators, we, we thought it important to not only have you get an understanding as to what you need to do in terms of um, having your, your, your business registered with the base or your product registered with the um, the BSG, but we want to communicate to you the why, because it's all well and good. I mean, some persons may have been told by inspectors, they may have engaged with inspectors somewhere along the journey, uh, or other persons may have given them information to say to them, hey, you need to be registered, you know, if you're going to sell um, food products. 
But then we thought that it's very important to not only know um, that yes, you need to register, but the why, the why is very important. So as the session progresses, we have a very able presenter who will be giving you that insight and, 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 we, and we'll be covering all the basics in terms of what you need to know as it relates to registration, the how, the why, et cetera. So you will be very much informed as we uh, progress in this session. We're gonna be asking your indulgence. So we'll be having, a, we'll be administ administering, sorry, two polls, very short, short and sweet, nothing too long, because really we want to get some insight into your understanding. So it's all well and good that we're communicating the information, but we really want to have an understanding that you in fact, you're learning, you have gained something from this session. And I'm sure when you leave this session, that is what you, that's your objective. You come here today, to invest your time. And at the end of this session, you really want to be armed with information. You want to be a, a step further in terms of your knowledge. And so we are here to facilitate that. So we're gonna be asking your indulgence by participating in this. And two very short um, polls, if you will, we'll put that up. You'll we'll see it on screen. So we'll have a pre test just before we go into the presentation. And after that, after the question and answer session, we'll be having a post um, quiz. Very short, very sweet, about four or so questions. So it's nothing too, too long. And so we're, we're asking that you, you participate because we really do appreciate the information. So at this point in time, we are going to be you now going to that very short, about eight minute video to give you some background into the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. Welcome to the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. BSJ provides services in the areas of standards development or standardization, metrology, training, and conformity assessment. Conformity assessment includes testing, calibration, and the certification. The Bureau of Standards Jamaica is a part of the National Quality Infrastructure of Jamaica. Now, the National Quality Infrastructure of Jamaica, or the NQI, is guided by four pillars. And those pillars are standards development, conformity assessment, metrology, and accreditation. And of those four pillars, the services that the Bureau of Standards offer constitutes three of the four pillars, which are standards development, conformity assessment, and metrology. Now, at the heart of what we do here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica are standards. Now, what are standards? Now, a very simple definition of a standard. A standard is an established way of doing something. Standards communicate requirements, specifications, guidelines, or characteristics. It may apply to goods, services, and systems. Now, standards ensure quality and consistency, as well as safeguard health no, the standard development process is a very involved process. It is facilitated through the formation of technical committees. Now, these committees comprise of stakeholders, including industry experts, regulators, persons from academia, consumer groups, and manufacturers, just to name a few. These committees drive the standards development process and all aspects of the standards development process from deciding the new standards or revision of outdated standards to defining the technical content of standards. And the development process includes the evaluation stage. So you have the evaluation of a proposal for the development revision or adoption of a standard that then goes to the technical committees or the technical committees then established. You then have a working draft of the standard developed by the technical committee and then that is submitted for editing. 
It then goes for public consultation and there's a prescribed period of time that that is out for public consultation. You then have the approval by the Standards Council and then the portfolio minister. At the end of that process, the standard is then gazetted and published. The services of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica adds value. And the value proposition of the Bureau of Standards is simply that the Bureau is a facilitator. It's a facilitator with an optimal combination of high quality services and world class facilities that address the needs of the customer and enables quality compliance and ultimately business success. The BSJ offers laboratory services as well as non-lab services. There are over 200 services that are offered. Now these are under the categories of analytical testing, which includes chemical and microbiological tests, nutritional analysis, product testing, which includes type approval and acceptance, construction materials, appliances and metal products, furniture, paints, etc. It also includes calibration and measurement services, packaging, packaged products and material testing, as well as label assessment and verification. The non-lab services include training and the training arm of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica is the Quality Institute. The Quality Institute offers internationally certified training courses as well as local training courses. There are several delivery options for those training courses which include online, in plant or on site as well as virtual training. We also have certification services and that is offered by the National Certification Body of Jamaica or the NCBJ and they offer management system certification and programs. We also have the Technical Information Center or the library and we provide research services and sale of standards. We also have our client slash industry support programs and that includes the client servicing program and the client servicing program is really where we have officers here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. Officers are here to assist the public, to assist customers. So say for example um, there is a need for research, you would engage the services of the library and if it is in fact that there is additional help or you know, assistance as it relates to understanding the contents of the various standards. We have our officers here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica who are here willing and able to assist in whatever way the client may require. So we have a little hand holding if you will and that is one of the client or industry support programs that we offer here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. Now the Bureau of Standards is also a World Trade Organization or the Technical Barriers to Trade Entry Inquiry Point. So if it is, for example, you have persons wishing to enter the overseas market and they may have particular questions or challenges, then this, we're here at the Bureau, we are what is called the um, National Inquiry Point. So various aspects of what is involved in entering overseas markets, etc. That information may be had here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. The Bureau of Standards Jamaica, as a facilitator of business development and trade, we have membership in a number of stakeholder groups. We make presentations to community groups. We also have a number of memoranda of understanding that we have in place to facilitate industry. The laboratories here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, a number of them are in fact internationally accredited laboratories. We have our mass metrology lab that is actually a Caribbean reference lab. We seek to inform, to educate, and really to create awareness as it relates to the services and value that the Bureau of Standards Jamaica offers. We invite individuals, small businesses, large businesses, to partake of the services of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. We want you to consider the Bureau of Standards Jamaica as your quality assurance partner. We welcome you.
Okay. So you, you may have seen some familiar faces in that video. And I know we had a little bit of buffering and um, so that's the nature of, of technology. But I do hope you would have seen enough or heard enough to actually um, gain further insights into what we do here at the BSJ. I bet you didn't know that we, we offered over 200 services. I bet you didn't know that. So this is new information, which is why we're here. And this is the BSJ information hotspot. So this is how we brand these events. All right, great. So in terms of the, the protocols going forward, I'm gonna ask that you mute your microphones, um, which is that you have a question. We, I'm gonna ask that you raise your hands. We have the, raised, we have the reaction um, icon there. So you may indicate by a show of hand that you have a question. We're asking that you rename. So in the, on your um, profile there, we're asking that you rename, have your first and the last name, the last name and the name of your organization. You may place that in the chat. So we may properly identify you. We have some messages from Mr. Ling um, in the, the chat, which will provide guidance as well. And um, so I'm see we're gonna move on. I'm seeing a, a, a hand right now. We haven't re reached that section just yet, but is there something burning? I see Sharon Walters, is it? You have a burning question. You may go ahead. Or are you testing out your, your reaction icons? All right, you are muted in, in, in the event that you're attempting to speak. We're not hearing you. All right, you may be testing your reaction icon. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who is speaking? I am Sharon Walters. Sharon, okay, okay. All right, great. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Walters. You have a burning question. Go ahead. I, 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 I have a burning question, but I would wait a little. I was just testing out. You're testing your act. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, but I could throw a little question still. I. I'm not well, I'm not set up yet. Well, I will I tell you what, if, if the question, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if the question is in relation to the subject matter here today, we're yes. going to ask you to hold your questions until we get oh. to that question and answer oh, section. No. Okay, okay, no right. problem. Right, so we're going to, we're going to wait until after the presentation and we'll take yes. all the questions. So great okay, that no you problem. tested out your icon. I hope other persons are able to find it. I know sometimes right. it's some challenges in Zoom and other platforms. So yes. once we get to that point, then we'll take the questions. So um, by way of the agenda, just to, to tell you what is to come. All right, mm -hmm. so we're gonna be, after I'm finished speaking here, we're gonna be doing, remember I, I mentioned the, the poll that we'll be doing. We're gonna be having that first poll right now. And then I did not um, mention that at the end of it, so we were having the pre and post, polls so pre before we actually get the information from the presentation and then the post poll would be after you've gotten the information from the presentation so we just want to test your knowledge basically because you know we want some insights into what you would have learned and then we're going to be having an evaluation as well very short too because we want you to help us to help you and to help others going forward whenever we execute similar sessions so Again, we ask your indulgence because we really want to ensure that when we, when we um, execute these sessions that they, they really do add value because that is our intent. And so we ask you to so participate so we can get that insight. So at this point in time, we're gonna be administering the pre-post um, quiz just to test your knowledge before you. So don't be afraid to participate, this is, this is not, we're not going to identify you individually. We're not going to, you know, it's not an academic test, if you will. It's just for us to get some insight into your knowledge before we actually give you the information. So what do you know at this point in time? And then we have some, you know, background information that we want. Um, so the poll is currently on screen. And um, so you may go ahead and you may so participate. It's very short. We're going to be dedicating hmm, just about three or so minutes to this exercise. And so we're asking everybody to participate. We want to have at least near 100, near 100 percent participation. 
and their and their and their most the true well, their true or false questions. So as other guess, if you will. All right. So I'm gonna be giving you two more minutes for those who may have been shy to jump in. But again, we ask you to really um, to participate. And this is very important. It's good for you too. So now before you would have had the benefit of the information, hazard a guess. And then after you've had the information, then your the very same quiz will be administered again. Same questions. And then we can you can have an idea whether or not you really would have gained some information that would have been presented. All right, so I'm going to give you, we're down to another minute. All right, and then you click the submit button at the end, the submit. And I, we really do appreciate your participation. Thank you so much. All right, so we, as I said, we want to have near 100% participation. All right, thank you. Okay. I hear I'm to give two more minutes. All right. So go ahead, folks. Okay. So so don't be intimidated by the questions, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know the answer, that's totally fine. That's a part of the, the learning curve. So at the end of the presentation, trust me, when we administer this poll again with the very same questions, you will probably get 100%. So don't be, don't be, don't be intimidated if you do not know the answer. Are you not sure of the answers right now? That's totally okay. Okay. I think we are down to that other minute now, so we have, we have that additional two minutes, yes. And there are four short questions. They're not, they're not long. So that should be, and as I said, the very same questions will be administered after the presentation. And I, and I know you're gonna get 100% after you've had that, the information. And some of you may be very knowledgeable already in this pre-assessment quiz, if you will. Okay. Do we have enough responses, team? Okay, I hear we're at 73%. I really would have wanted us to be in the 90% region. What, what is your hesitation? Remember, it's not being graded. We, can't, we won't identify you individually. It's just for the benefit of you, you know, you having the knowledge if you would have, if you are in fact so informed prior to getting the information and then after getting the information, then you'll also test your knowledge. So we're at 70, 70 something percent, I'm told by the team. Would have loved it to be in the 90s region or at least high 80s. But we will, we have a, a the presentation to come, so I won't delay much further. For those who want to jump in at the last minute, having said, having heard all that I have said, then you may do so in the last few seconds that you'll have the poll up. So we do a countdown now to close this poll, this pre-assessment poll. So we're counting down now 10, nine, eight. Remember to mute your microphones. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we are going to be closing the poll at this time. All right. So we thank you so much for those persons who would have participated. We really do appreciate your, your input. All right. So, all right. So without further ado, we're going to be going now to our presentation and we're going to be having a, a presenter from the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. So that entity now carries out the regulatory functions that once resided with the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. 
So the presenter will, of course, give you some more insight into that. But um, just to say that the, the two entities are operationally separate. So why are you hearing from, the, from someone from the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority? The reason for that, as I said, the regulatory function that once resided with the Bureau of Standards Jamaica a few years ago in 2015 thereabouts, there was a separation. And so the regulatory function was delegated to the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. So the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, the Bureau of Standards Jamaica now functions as a facilitator. Okay, so we are a facilitator and no longer having the regulatory function. And so we have with us here today from the National Compliance and the Regulator Authority, Mr. Lenworth Clark. So just to give you some insight into Mr. Clark before he comes on, let me just read his profile. So Mr. Lenworth Clark is an inspector at the National Compliance and Regulator Authority or the NCRA. He has worked as a regulator for over 16 years as an inspector, his core responsibilities are to inspect and monitor commodities at food processing establishments in Jamaica. His work also includes monitoring of goods at the ports of entry and in the domestic market, and also to test and certify measuring devices that are used in trade locally. Now in conducting the inspection of products, Mr. Clark is also required to assess the label of these products to ensure each label is compliant with the relevant legislation. He also provides technical guidance on the appropriate labeling legislations for products to clients of the NCRA and other stakeholders. Mr. Clark is currently a member of the technical committee on, the la on labeling of pre-packaged foods. He was the chairperson for the industry lead group on the ethnobotany agronomy for the National Council on Technical and Vocational Education and Training or NCT VET qualification plan um, from January 2021 to March 2021. And he also is the chairperson for the industry lead group on agro food processing for the NCT VET uh, qualification plan and he served during the period uh, 2020, August to December 2020. Mr. Clark currently is the chairperson of the Program Advisory Committee, uh, PAC, for the Associate of Science degree in Agro-Processing at the Monique Multidisciplinary College. Now, other than his professional life, Mr. Clark enjoys spending time with his family and friends, being around the children, socializing, watching and playing football, as well as, and he currently holds a Master of Science degree in government from the University of the West Indies, Mona. He's also a proud past student of the College of Agriculture, Science and Education, CASE, where he spent five glorious years at CASE. He did a Bachelor of Technology in Agricultural Production and Food Systems Management, and he has an associate degree in general agriculture. Mr. Clark also is an alumna. Um, Mr. Clark's other uh, alma mater are Elim, Elim, I think it's pronounced Elim Agricultural School, uh, Seaforth High School, and Seaforth Primary School. So that would have given you an introduction now to our speaker. So I, I, I guess you probably know him a little better now, right? So without further ado, Mr. Lenworth Clark will now make the presentation. Mr. Clark. Madam Fagan, thank you so much um, for such warm introduction. I trust that everyone on the platform is hearing me. Ms. Fagan, just to do a check, are you hearing me? I am hearing you loud and clear. Excellent. Let me just bring up my presentation.
And also to check, are you seeing my presentation on screen, Ms. Fagan? Yes, and it is in presentation mode. Yes. All right, then. Thank you so much. Morning to everyone. I trust that you and your family are in good health. As Ms. Fagan indicated earlier, my name is Lenworth Clark, and I am an inspector working in the Food Safety Inspectorate at the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. With me today, even though she will not be presented, uh, presenting, is Inspector Corian Anderson. She also works in the Food Safety Inspectorate um, at the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. Instead of calling this a presentation, I would like to call it a conversation. That's what I like to say. So the main aim of this conversation is for you to have a better appreciation of the process for your establishment to become registered and also issue with a certificate of registration. Throughout this conversation, I want you to pay keen attention, but also I want you to relax and enjoy our conversation. As Ms. Fagan indicated earlier, I would prefer to have the questions at the end. However, if you have a burning question, you can place it in the chat or you can use your raised hand feature. Truth be told, I may not have the answers to all your questions. However, I promise you that I will do my best to answer and also to guide you where your questions could be answered. So look at the screen. As you can see the question, are you in the know? Simply put, we are asking, do you know about the process for your establishment to become registered? I hope by the end of this conversation, you will be in the know. However, before I get into the details of our conversation, I would like for you to have a clear understanding of the difference between the Bureau of Standards Jamaica and the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. Here we go. You see the words, the change. So that was the old Bureau of Standards logo. Here comes the new one. The regulatory division of the BSJ, which is the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, is now into a new entity called the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. Hope you're understanding. So you have the BSJ old logo, new logo, and then the regulatory division of the Bureau of Standards is now called the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. Some persons tend to ask, is the Bureau closed down? No, the Bureau is still there. But well, they're there as a facilitator, while the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority is the regulator. So we are the ones who conduct the inspections. I hope I have cleared up some any misunderstanding. If at the end you still do not um, understand, you may ask your questions then. How did the change came about? Because this is important. So it came about through the instrument of authority where the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority now assumes all the functions of the regulatory division that usually be carried out by the Bureau of Standards on the three legislation, the Standards Act, the Process Food Act, and the Ways and Measures Act, and the attendant, um, and the attendant regulations. As you saw, that started from way back on the 29th day of December in 2015. So simple put, what the inspector, the inspectors that usually be at the Bureau of Standards is no longer at the Bureau of Standards. They are now at the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. And this information, I want you to understand it and also transfer it to others who really and truly want to understand about the entities. So 
the NCRA, still a statutory body, and we fall under the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. We still use the Standards Act of 1968, the Processed Food Act of 1959, and the Weights and Measures Act of 1976, and each of their attendant regulations. The, if I might add, the NCRA uh, still uses these legislation because the NCRA um, legislation is not yet to bear. It's still in a bill, um, uh, at the bill stage. Um, I saw the update yesterday and hopefully by the end of this year, um, this calendar year, um, we will have a legislation and the NCRA will be established um, and stand on its own. So at the NCRA, we have three inspectorates. As you can see on your screen, the Food Safety Inspectorate, the Import and Domestic Commodities Inspectorate, and the Legal Metrology and Petroleum Inspectorate. I am from the Food Safety Inspectorate. What the Import and Domestic Commodities Inspectorate um, does is that they are the inspectors that will be at the ports of entry, also in your domestic market conducting inspection. That is in short what they do. The Legal Metrology and Petroleum Inspectorate, what they do is that they would be, they are the ones who go to the gas stations, and ensure that any device that is used in trade, it is adequately delivering um, the amount that it should be delivered. They are the ones who actually too take samples of petrol um, from our gas stations. So I trust that you have an appreciation of the inspectorates that are, that are at the NCRA. Okay, so we're getting into the details of the matter. So the roles in food safety. We assist in setting standards or provide um, technical advice. We also ensure that the standards are met and we ensure that um, we maintain a strong enforcement program. And you'll get a full understanding of the enforcement program a little bit later. We also do tests of um, wind devices that are used at food establishment. And we do um, forums like these, awareness session, presentation, to assist the public in understanding more about the institution and the rules and its function that is carried out. Okay, so I can see these are bold and there's a reason why they are bold because these are our main functions at the NCRA. We conduct inspections, we take samples of food products for testing and after those are tested by an accredited lab, then we analyze the test results and by chance we might certify a product depending on the product so we'll do what we call a, um, a certificate of approval if it is a prescribed food so getting into it even further the importance of registration so you can see on your screen it is a legal requirement if you do pre-packaged food, you must be registered. And I will show you what the law actually says a little bit later. The importance too is to show that an establishment is in compliance with its legal requirement. It will also assist in increasing the credibility of your product that is on the market. Because if persons know that you are registered, then they are more likely to purchase your product. It improves customer trust of your establishment because the persons are saying that, yeah, man, this, this person, they, they, they like to obey what the law says. So I think I would prefer to support this, this company. And it actually improves the reputation of your establishment and the product that it produces. It reduces you getting any form of legal action against you by a regulator or in this particular sense by the NCRA. So this reduces us withdrawing your products from sale or condemning or, might I say, take any enforcement action against your establishment. And you will see the enforcement action that can be taken if you are not registered. 
I'll tell you about it a little bit later. And the name of your establishment will be posted on the list of registered establishment um, on the NCRA's website. And I must say that sometimes you're in the office and persons call. And for example, they say, a water, water company, which water should I buy? And we just lead them to the, the list of registered establishment, food establishment to be in particular, to be specific on our website and let them make the decision. If they don't see your name, I can tell you some persons will not purchase the product if your name is not there. So it is important, very important that you get registered or have your, regi your, your establishment registered. So as I said, I will tell you in the law, I like to show persons what is actually in the law. Sorry about that. And under JS36, which is a Jamaican standard specification for processed food, general 6.1, it clearly states that no one shall operate an establishment for processing food until it is registered with the Bureau. So even though it's the NCRA doing the registration, we still have to register with the Bureau because the NCRA doesn't have its own legislation as yet, as I may mention earlier, and issued with a certificate of registration of an establishment. So you are not supposed to be operating unless you are registered. And this, I specifically screenshot it and put it in this presentation. So the registration process. Registration process where you as a client, you will complete the application form or forms. And again, this depends on the type of product that you are processing. And I'll get a little bit more specific later on on that. You'll make a deposit of $5,000. That is if you are not... Um, one of our one of our credit clients, sorry about that. If you're not one of our credit clients, then you'll make a deposit of five thousand dollars. Let I just pause here and say this five thousand dollars covers the first hour of our inspection. Then you will be prorated by minute. Um uh, you will be um the inspection will be calculated by minute, I should say, but it's also $5,000 per hour thereafter. If you still don't understand that, um, if the inspector assigned to you, they will explain how this works. So the inspector, after that, we get the application form, then the inspector makes arrangement, and then we come and conduct a registration assessment. If all goes well, then the inspector recommends you for recommends the establishment for registration if things don't go well during the the inspection or the registration assessment as we call it then you will not be recommended for registration and let i just say here that we do what we call three assessments so we come once we give time for you to address the non-conformances. We come back a second time for you to address the, the non-conformances or any additional non-conformances, and we come a third time. If not, we will have to just kindly ask you to stop processing and uh, make the necessary changes, and then you'll have to reapply for registration. Just explaining that part. Again, if it's not clear, you can ask your questions. And then, but if everything goes well during the assessment and you're recommended, then a certificate of registration of an establishment is prepared and it is issued. And when we say it is issued, it is placed in our customer service over here by the Bureau of Standards. And you can collect it at any time you desire. But it is important that you collect it and you put it at a conspicuous place in your establishment so that, um, you know, persons, if they come by, if you have clients that come by, they can actually see your certificate of registration. I hope everyone is following me so far. 
So registration, registration lasts for one year. I'll say it again. Registration of your establishment lasts for one year. But so you also need to renew that registration. And as you can see on your screen, 6.3.7 of JS 36 says, states clearly that each application for renewal of registration of an establishment shall be made no later than two months prior to the expiration of the current certificate of registration. So if you are registered and you are going to, you are going to renew that registration, you, you should, not even should, you shall do it two months prior to the expiration of the current certificate of registration. And that is that that, that is that is there to ensure that the inspector comes by before your certificate expires and conduct the assessment to ensure that at no particular time that you are not registered. Because if we go back to what 6.1 says that you shall not operate without you having a certificate of registration. Hope that is also clear. So we use standard to conduct our inspections. And as you can see on your screen, these are some of the standards that we use. The main one that is used at every establishment, whether you be a, a big processor, as they call them, or you do home base or cottage industry, we call them inspections from once you're processing prepackaged food. That's the standard that we use. The short for it is JS36, but the long name for it is the Jamaican Standard Specification for Processed Food General. This is the one that is used to register an establishment and also used for the renewal of that registration. We also use the JSCRS 5 and CRS in this case means CARICOM regional standard. And the long name for it is the Jamaican standard specification for the labeling of prepackaged food. So this is the label. And as Ms. Fagan stated earlier, we also do assessment of your labels. And if they are not in compliance, then uh, enforcement, an enforcement action can be taken. The others, as you can see, there's just um, to show us that we have other specification. So it depends on the product that you, you, you are processing. You will have to have a read or you can come to the where you can come to the library and have a read or you can purchase these standards. So as you can see on your screen, you have standards for bread, cassava bread, um, for processed ackee, you have for spices and sauces, you have for prepackaged natural coconut water, and the list goes on, water, brown sugar, you have for white um, sugar, you have for honey, jerk seasoning and jerk sauce, and you have for jams, jellies, and marmalade. So it depends on the product that you're doing, you might have a standard specification for that one. Okay, this, everything is important, but I need you to pay keen attention to this part. We reach the classification of food. And this is important because uh, as, as you said, that you might have to fill out application forms, whether it be um, under the Processed Food Act or the Standards Act form. And I will show you the forms later and tell you how to, to fill them out. So we have what you call the prescribed food. And we have a list of prescribed food. And the prescribed food means any food that is manufactured or processed for export or for sale and for which grades and standards have been prescribed. And when you say under Section 13, it means under Section 13 of um, the processed food um, regulations. You may not do a prescribed food. Most persons in Jamaica don't do a prescribed food. So I kind of coin it and say not a prescribed food and I give examples there. 
So it is for the examples, as you can see on screen, your bread, your buns, your bullas, your donut, your coconut water, your natural, um, your akis, and you can go on and on and on. Because that's the list of prescribed foods that we currently have. If you do not do a prescribed food, do not put, do not apply on the Processed Food Act form. And as I said, I will show you. So this is what the Processed Food Act form looks like. Only prescribed food should go on this application. Only prescribed food. And the prescribed foods are these. If you do not, if your product doesn't have any of these names, do not put it on the Processed Food Act form. However, all other products shall go on the Standards Act form. Every product that you process in your establishment shall go on the, this form that you're seeing on screen. I see a raised hand. Can I take this question kindly? Alan? Hi, yes. My name is Mrs. Nzinga Allen. And I'm sorry, but the, the explanation that you just gave is slightly confusing um, to me. So I'm wondering if you could find it that another way to explain it because the prescribed versus the non-prescribed food, I'm, not, I'm really confused about what, how you're, you're um, differentiating them. Um, I'm sorry, but I am. Okay, then not a problem. And I'm here to clarify all of that. If you look currently on screen, these are prescribed foods and they're only found under the Processed Food Act. So you can mangoes, which no one really, we haven't seen that in years. Mango with rum, nobody does those anymore. So the main ones you can see that person still do is the meat, which is a cured meat, canned meat, sausages, frankfurt, bologna. Some person still do canned soup, some persons do frozen food and some persons do frozen stew peas. If you don't do any of these that you see listed here, you, sorry, my screen is, sorry. If you, the food that you see listed there goes on this form, the Processed Food Act form. So again, these goes on the Processed Food Act form. If it's not listed here, you put it on the Standards Act form. Everything that you process in your establishment, you put it on the Standards Act form. Do not know if there is clarity there. So everything that you process. So if you process coconut water, if you process um jams jellies if you process um coconut drops if you process um water if you process um beans everything goes on this form the standards act form however if you process any of these you put it also on the prescribed food form which is we call the pfa oh, so just a quick so if you do what's on that list, then you also have to, you have to put it on both forms, both the standard uh, I'm forms. Sorry, forms. sorry to butt in. I'm not hearing you clearly. Oh. I'm sorry. Is yeah. that better? Okay. Yes, it's much better. Um, would, would both forms have to be filled out if what you're doing in, is what's on the prescribed list or just one of those forms? The prescribed no, both, list. Okay, thanks for that. So if you're doing a prescribed food, both forms has to be filled out. Okay, thank you very much. So you will put it on the Standards Act form, what you see on screen, and also fill out this one, which is the, the PFA or the Processed Food Act. And the reason for this is because um, a lot of times we recognize that persons, they, are, they, they will go online, they see a form, and they just fill, it, fill out any one of the forms. 
So that's one of the main reasons why I ensure that I put it inside this presentation to show the main difference. They might look like they're the same, but they are actually not the same forms. Okay, so thanks for that again. So if you're doing a prescribed food, you fill out both forms with the prescribed food. If you're doing what we consider non-prescribed food, you just fill out the Standards Act form. I hope you have clarified that part. The other thing in terms of um, understanding the form, as you can see, the name of the establishment, you, can, you should put in the address of the establishment and the address here should be the, at the location where you are processing. I hear like a mic open. Could, Alan, could you close your mute, mute your mic for me? Thanks so much. So the address that is here, it should be the location where you are processing. And as you can see, the telephone number, the WhatsApp number, your email address, and if you have a fax number, you can put it there. And also the full name of the operator of the establishment. This address can either be where you where you live or your, um, where, where the processing is taking place. And it can also be um, if you have a head office. So two addresses, the first one, it has to be where you are processing the location. The, the, the second one can either be where you're processing your home address, or it can be if you have a head office, you can put your head office there. And you put a telephone number, and you should list the name of product that you're manufacturing. So it is the common name of the product that should go there. So if it is coconut water, you put your coconut water there. If you're doing tambourine balls, you put tambourine ball here. If you're doing juices, you put orange juice, pineapple juice, cherry juice. If it's a drink, you can put cherry flavored drink or you, you can put orange flavored drink. It just depending on the product that you do. You put a list here. And the brands of the products that you manufacture should also go on this. The size is also important to go on this list. The question has been asked, has this establishment operated before? If it's a yes, you tick yes. And you just, um, you go ahead and say, if so, state the last date or period. So you can put the last day that you did your manufacturing or if it's a period, because some persons do processing seasonally. So you can put the season at which you did the operation. Or for what purpose? Manufacturing of orange juice, manufacturing of um, purified water, manufacturing of spring water, and we could you, you just go on and on, depending on what you manufactured before. If no, you do not have to answer A and B. And then we move on to the signature of the operator and the date at which you, you fill out the form or you sign the form. I trust that that provides some clarity on how to fill out the application. The PFA is similar. Sorry, I'm trying to monitor this area too. The PFA is similar where you have the name of the establishment, the, the address and the full name of the operator. And as it can say, the prescribe which is proposed to manufacture in this establishment. So it's only the prescribed food that actually goes on this, um, this application. And as you can see there, it's the same question as this establishment been operated before. If so, you state the period and you can state um, the prescribed food that you manufacture, you sign and you date the form. Okay. These forms can be found on our website, um, www.ncra.org.jm. 
the information is at actually at the the on this uh, on this presentation and you just simply will go into forms and you will see the the list of forms that are there that you can um, download and fill out so that's the form so you have applied the inspector now comes to conduct an inspection these are the areas at which we will look at so we look at your establishment environs. We look at the building to see how clean it is, to see the structure of it. Um, we look at your water. If you have water, if you have ice, we look at your ice quality. We look at your waste disposal, sanitation, and all the necessary documents that comes with it. We look at the employees and also the employee facilities, whether it be the bathrooms, if you do have, or the change room. Look how clean they are or well kept they are. Pest control, we look if there are um, pests around. And also we we'll look if, um, if you have a pest control operator, all the details about that pest control operator should be present for us to inspect. Personal hygiene is important um, in every way. And it's also important when we are doing, um, when you are processing. Um, so we, as I said earlier, we look at the persons that are there, we look at the garments, we look at how appropriate they, they are attire whenever they are conducting um, the processing. The equipment and utensils that are used, we look at the installation, how clean they are, or well maintained they are. Transportation, if you, um, if you do transport, because not everyone does someone well everyone does transportation so we do we, we look both at your raw material transportation and your finished goods um transportation um especially the record if the transportation is there the inspector can have a look at the transportation but but your records to show how clean the transportation is or are depending on your operation storage storage of both raw materials and finished good whether it be cold storage or it's just um, ambient temperature storage we look at the cleanliness of those um, um, areas we look where you store the product if it is off the ground and away from the wall those are some of the things that we look if you have allergens in your facility we look at allergen control your food defense um, simple put is if your containers are um, sealed properly or if the access to your products, if it's, if it's actually um, hard enough or you have your products um, stored well, if you, have, um, if you have like security access to where your product is stored. We also look at your employees qualification and training to see how trained they are, if they are trained in food safety and all the necessary thing that comes with it. You might, you might see me going fast through this because this is just the inspection process. Yes, you will be involved in the process, but the inspector is the one that mainly deals with this section. We look at you processing from raw materials to finished goods until it reaches the, the container and its label. And we look at the compliance of the label and we look at your quality um, assurance that you have at your establishment. As I said, I just went through this to show you what the inspection um, entails. Yes, you will be there, but this is the main focus of an inspector. So I have spoken much about how you apply for registration, the filling out of the form or forms, depending on the product or products that you do. I spoke um, um, quickly about the inspection. So now I'll be going to the label. I do not know if anyone, I could pause here a bit to see if I can get some questions about the application process and also the, um, the inspection if you do have questions. I was told by the team here that I should check the, the, the chat. Your presentation. Okay. It says, um, does, does cassava bread include um, 
um, BAM is? Um, the answer to that is that no. I just log in. What is uh, prescribed food? I think I've explained that. Um, uh, the prescribed foods are found under the grades and standards, and it's just under the Processed Food Act. And as I, uh, we, we kind of con coin something that say none are, are, are not prescribed food, just to have a, an understanding of the difference. So the list is there. If you do not do any of those products, that means it's not a prescribed food. So don't even, if you look at it and it's not there, just fill out the Standards Act form. Don't fill out the, the, the prescribed food form. The question, if my products are done at SRC, can I use that address only? Um, the answer to that, it depends on the arrangement that you have with SRC. I'll have to speak to you one-on-one -on -one with that one to make a determination because you can have a situation where you go in and you do all the, you rent this facility from a, com, a company like SRC and you do all processing there by, by with yourself and your staff. You can have arrangements where it's, a, it's the SRC staff and your staff together that does your product. And you can also have the arrangement that SRC does all the processing for you. So it depends. So it's one-on-one -on -one conversation would be great for that. Um, um, Paulette Bailey, I see General Food Supermarket. Um, I do not understand, but if you're saying that if General Sup Food Supermarket should be um, registered, again, if you are doing prepackaged food, then yes. And once you're doing prepackaged food, if you're doing even seasoned meat, if you're seasoning up the meat there, we consider that a process. If you're doing a rotisserie chicken there, then yes it ought to be um, registered. If you're doing breads there, then yes, you ought to be registered. Could you clear up what you meant by said transportation is a little bit unclear. Transportation, and thanks for this question. Transportation is anything that is transporting your goods, whether it be your raw materials where, where you're buying goods and it's coming in, or, or you make that, that good and it's going out, which you which is your raw material. Because for me, for example, if the raw material is coming in, it will be it will be good to so it will be good that you look to see we what transportation your goods are coming in. If the if the if it if it is clean, free of um, any contaminants, you don't, for example, don't want to see your goods um, coming in and um, it is with like, whether it be like cement or it is with um, gasoline or anything that can contaminate the food. And also when it's going out, you, you wouldn't want your products to be, um, be transported with things that can contaminate it. Um, the other question is that if my facility is already registered, do I have to register each product? No, you don't have to register each product. But what we like to see is you processing that product because the law speaks about registration of an establishment, but the product is also um, um, important. They ask um, what it means by um, um, quality assurance. Um, it, it, it simply means um, anything, any testing that you would conduct at the establishment. Um, if you do, then we will look at the, the records that are associated with, um, with that product. And even if you send it externally, we'll actually look at the, the records that are associated with the product that um, you, you do that test with. Hope I have an answered that. Would these standards apply to processing of animal food and animal supplement? The answer is, is, is no. We define food, and I probably should have done this before. We've defined food as anything that is processed, semi-processed or raw, that is intended for human consumption. Okay. However, may I pause here to say, though, that there's a general labeling standard that animal food an animal food supplement may be um, 
maybe assessed against, if I may use that word. But in terms of getting your establish, an establishment registered for animal food or animal food supplement, no. This is solely intended for human consumption. Thank you all for, um, for these um, questions. If you have more questions, put them in the chat so I can answer your question as best as possible. I now move back to the presentation. I am going to speak a little bit about labels. So here we go. So the labeling standard that is used in Jamaica is the JSCRS 5. 2010, and the long name for it, as you can see on your screen, is the Jamaican Standard Specification for the Labeling of Prepackaged Food. So under that standard, they see a label. Uh, they define a label and they define labeling. And uh, as you can see, it says that is a tag or a brand or a pictorial description, um, matter written, printed, stenciled, marked, embossed, or impressed on or attached to a food container. That is what uh, we see as a label. And we mainly be talking about a label today. And labeling is, uh, as you can see, the, the, the definition, the written, printed, or graphic mat matter that is presented on a label um, accompanying the food or displaying near the food, including that for the purpose of promoting uh, promoting its sale or disposal. But we'll be mainly talking about labels and both of these definitions um, comes from um, CRS 5. But as I said, we may be talking about label and not necessarily labeling. So what is the importance of label? Again, it's a legal requirement. So you are, if you're doing prepackaged good, your product must be labeled. It provides the customer or the consumer with information um, about the product and in this case, it would be your food product and it advertises the product and it distinguishes a product from that of the competitor. And it basically establishes um, your brand. And as I speak about brand um, here, a brand in on the brand on the CRS5, it, it says that you may have a brand, um, but it depends on the organization because it is important to an organization to have a brand so persons can have an association with your brand uh, and as it says it distinct it will help to even distinguish your product from other uh, from other persons but in the law it says the brand may you may have a brand so that is all up to the persons who are are, are processing are the owner of this uh, of the establishment. So on the CRS5, I'm just telling you what the scope covers. And the scope applies to the labeling of all prepackaged food to be offered to the consumer or even for catering purposes. So if you're doing something and it's for catering purposes, um, as it says, you ought to be um, um, have a label on that product. But it is not applicable to these products. Sold unpacked or in an open or uncovered um, package. So you weigh or measured in or counted into the package in the presence of the, the, the processor, um, the, the purchaser, I should say. So this example of B would be like you're over the counter. You go and you say, send me pound of sugar or on a flower. You don't have to have that bag or that package labeled. If it's intended for export alone, um, this standard doesn't cover it. So if you have a, have a, have a market overseas um, and it's, that's solely what you're doing the, the product for, it doesn't, it doesn't cover. I'm not saying that it should not have a label but CRS5 is not does not cover um, if it's for export only. But if we see that product in the market being offered for sale, it is no longer for export only. It will now be offering for sale locally and then the standard will be applied to it. And if you have a CARICOM standard, like for example, you have bears, um, can, can, can pick that up. And they have specific 
standard for labeling of beers, then the CRS-5 doesn't apply to it. And if you have things that are gift wrap um, for, for person you're giving out the gift, those products don't have to be um, labeled. And we have been doing all of this. It, I think we have an appreciation. If you're giving somebody a gift, you don't necessarily have to label it. You know, like if you make a cake for somebody and you're giving them um, as a gift, you don't have to have that product labeled. Or should I say this labeling standard does not apply to it? I think that's a better thing to, to say. So the requirements um, of a label, the name of the food, as you can see, and this should be the, the, the way we consider it as the common name, list of ingredients, and that is all of the ingredients that you use shall be on the label. The net content, and if I dare say, and or drain weight. So not all products have a drain weight, but you must have a net content. But if it has both drain weight and net content, it should be displayed. It shall be displayed. And it shall be displayed on the principal display panel of the product. Same thing with you, the name of your food. It should be, it shall be on the front of your package, in a sense. So it's the principal display panel that both the name of the food and the net content um, shall be displayed. The name and address of the establishment. Uh, person might say, this is the where I package the food. Not necessarily. If you have a head office, for example, you can use that because it says the name of the, the address of the manufacturer, the distributor, the, the packer, those are the things that the standard speaks about that you can have there. However, if it is, if you're going to use, for example, the, the head, head office or a separate address from where you process, it's not says manufactured for and not by, because by would imply that it's being done at this location. For would mean that you're doing it for someone else. So you can make that clear distinction between by and for. It shall have a country of origin, and the country of origin is the last place where a significant process take place. So if you if you import something and you just repackage that product, that's not a product of Jamaica. But if you import something, um, and then you, if you import a food and then you do some of, amount of manipulation to it or process to it, then that now becomes a product of Jamaica. Because again, the country of origin is the last point at which a significant process took place. The lot identification, um, you shall have the, the lot identification of the product, aka your batch code, that's what some persons call it. But in the standard, they call it a lot identification. You shall have a date mark or date marking, um, the expiration date or the best before date. Or uh, what we see in the standard is called the date of minimum durability. So it shall be displayed. And the words best before are something similar to intent, like you saw BB or BBE. Um, you can have that, and it must be displayed in front of the date of minimum durability. You shall have a storage in instruction. Um, um, depends, especially for products um, that has more than one use um, or uh, not, not necessarily use, use in the sense of a person can use the product more than one time if they are watching like their calories. That product shall have a storage instruction on it telling persons how to store the product after it is open. Um, the instruction for use, it also says you should have instruction for use. Um, again, it depends on the, the product that you have. You you shall put an instruction for use on it. So these are the, uh, the main requirements. If you need further information, it will be good for you to have CRS, um, CRS 5 with you because it provides much more detailed information about um, about the labeling of uh, a product. I, I will just pause here since I, I, I see a hand. Um, Alan, could you go ahead? 
Hi, another bit of clarification, please, regarding the statement you made about the export product, the product that's exclusively exported, uh, not needing not needing to have the CRS5, but is there a different standard for that product? Okay, great question. As it says, this standard is not applicable to food intended for export only. You ask if there's another standard. If you are going to export, you shall gather the information of the country, the, the, the standards or the regulation of that country that you're going to export to. So if you are going to export to um, the United States, for example, you will have to know, obey the, reg the regulation or the labeling regulation of the United States. If you're going to export to Canada, you'd have to obey Canada's uh, requirement. If you're going to export to the UK, Australia, South Africa, you will have to um, ensure that your labels are in um, those countries' um, requirement. So technically, yes, there are other standards, but we can only deal with the products that are being offered for sale in Jamaica using CRS-5. I trust that that has um, helped clarify your, your question. Yes, thank you. All right, not a problem. So we reach, we come in, we winding down. So the do's and don'ts. So the do's, try your best to, um, to complete your application accurately. And when we say accurately, again, we're speaking about the correct name of the company, the correct address, even sometimes the correct telephone number. Ensure that you, the list of products, that you have the, the, the common name of the product, not something that you actually make up, but uh, a name that is, 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 is common to us. Read the relevant legislation applicable to the product process at your establishment. Time and time we go and the processes have no idea or minimal, I should say, idea in terms of the legislation that will be used to, in a sense, um, in a sense to inspect your establishment. So it will be good that you can get a copy of the standard specification or the, any one of the legislation that applies to your product. Or you can come to our library at uh, Six Winchester Road and you can read the standard that is applicable to your product. Ensure um, that production is taking place whenever there is an inspection. Um, we are there mainly to see the processing. Yes, the associated documents and the building and the people um, that uh, contribute to the processing we will look at, but our main focus is on the processing from the raw material until it reaches the finished good and in its container. So just ensuring if the inspector calls and say we're going to conduct an inspection, they generally ask, are you processing? Um, see if you can negotiate in a sense uh, and speak to the inspector, tell them if you're processing or you're not processing. Um, on the day of the inspection. If everything goes well, again, I say after inspection and you're recommended for registration, the certificate is prepared and it is sent at our customer service. I'm asking kindly that you collect such certificate of registration um, and display it at your establishment. For renewal, will ask that you apply two months prior to the expiration of the current certificate of registration. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have persons who apply after the expiration. That's not necessarily good because you will now be in an establishment uh, operating um, without a valid certificate of, of registration. And that's a clear breach of JS 36 um, 6.1. 
So I encourage you all to apply two months prior to the expiration of your current certificate if you're doing um, renewal. So those are the do's. I just end over to the don't. Um, I will ask, I will ask kindly and just be with me. I will say kindly, please do, do not submit the application um, if you are not ready hmm, to process. So you are just, to can give an example, you are just um, starting to build your um, your establishment. Or if you are if you are going to do some you're going to rent a space. You're just in the process of renting, but you hear that, oh, you need to apply. If you're not prepared, uh, if you're not going to be ready in the next, I would say two months, um, don't apply. Just wait until you're ready, then you apply because it have internal implications and also implications for you because when you make your deposit of $5,000, and we come by your establishment um, because if you apply, we have to come by to check because you will be on our book saying that you have applied and we have to report on you. Well, each inspector of the report on their establishment that is assigned to them every month, we're going to report on you as not being registered. And uh, our finance department is going to question us and also who supervise us, what is happening? And as I said, these are implications on you where if we come by maybe about, about three times, then, you know, we tend, because it's very expensive um, to, to conduct an inspection, um, the, we might, your money might not be refunded. It may not, but you have channels that you can get back your money um, um, if all goes well. But I will just nicely say that if you are not ready don't apply as yet um the second one don't apply on the incorrect form and we spoke about that earlier so if you are doing prescribed food you do you you, you complete both applications if you are not doing a prescribed food you just complete one application and the prescribed food only prescribed foods go on the pfa form um the last one for the don't, don't set a minimal time for an inspection of your establishment. And reason for that, and I'll give an example. So my colleague went somewhere and, you know, somebody, when they introduced themselves, they were speaking to somebody else and they say, um, no man, this is going to take 15 minutes. You, you, we do not know what will happen during an inspection. So try not to set a minimal time for that inspection because anything can happen at the, um, during the inspection, okay? And, and some person set their time to be, oh, it's going to last for one hour. And sometimes they are rushing you, so you need to speed up. No, you, you should, should not be rushing the inspector. Um, you need an, a thorough inspection needs to be done of your establishment. Because if I may pause here to say, the product that you consume is not, the, the product that you process is not only the product that you consume. And uh, I guarantee that most of you that uh, consume other products, you have never been in the establishment that they have um, produced, that they are producing in. And, uh, you would want to know that whenever we go to the, those establishment on your behalf, that we are conducting a thorough inspection. And it's the same principle that applies when we are inspecting your establishment. Persons who consume your product doesn't do, do not go into your establishment and they're expecting us to do a thorough inspection. And it comes also under our principle of integrity. Um, that we do what is necessary at all times, even if we are not being watched. Uh, so as it says, do not set a minimal time for an inspection. So we reach the section that speaks about our enforcement um, part. Um, are there any questions that is burning about um, the the labels or even my do's and don'ts. 
I hear that I should check the chat. Come in. Okay. And what's the difference between prepackaged food and and packaged food? Um, there is uh, is really no 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 difference from prepackaged is what they generally use, and from once you you do it in advance before it is offered for sale to the to the consumer, it is considered as a prepackaged food. So it's prepackaged is what we generally use. There's no much difference between a packaged food and a, um, a prepackaged food. If you are re, if you are relocated, do you have to update your labels? The answer to that is yes. And if you are relocated, and this is a good question again, and if you are relocating, so if you are at um, 14 Run Street and you are moving somewhere else, another inspection also has to be conducted at the new um, facility. So yes, your labels need to be updated and also your um your another inspection has to be conducted at the new location so thanks for that question again this one does the scope of the label standard covers product for the retail market yes so that's what he's speaking about anything that is being offered for sale in our domestic retail market then yes it, it anything that you see that is being offered for food that is being offered for sale in a package out there on the market, yes, CRS 5 applies um, to it. Whether it manufactures locally or it comes from overseas, CRS 5 applies to it. All right, thank you all for those questions. Um, Alan, I see your hand again. Yes, I know I'm asking lots of questions, sorry. Um, I just don't type very fast. Um, so the, I have two questions, the product, um, hold on. So products, all your products don't have to be registered individually. Is that what you said? As long as the establishment where they are processed is um, is is registered, is that that's one question? And the other question was, net content um, does not include the weight of the package that the product is in. It's just the product itself. I just want to verify that. Okay, then. Um, to to, to answer the last one first. So yes, the net content is the content of the product itself, not the um, the content of the product and the and and the package. Um, to answer the the first one, it, the law speaks about uh, registration of an establishment. So if you are, uh, you don't have to register the product individually, but we ought to see you manufacturing um, those products. And, and truth be told, you might not see all products being manufactured, but what we do is that we try to do, not try, we do a risk profile and see which one of your products um, has the most risk um, associated with it. And uh, we, we conduct an inspection mainly of that. But if you are, we, we also do what we, can, what we call routine inspections. So we may pop up to conduct an inspection or we may call and tell you that we are coming to conduct a routine inspection. But throughout the times, most of the times what I've seen is that we get the opportunity to see most of the product being manufactured at, that, at an establishment. I trust that that I've answered your question, Alan. Just to, just to take it one step further. So if I do, if I process honey, um, like infused honey, for instance, or some kind of processed product, I don't have to take that or one sample of each of those products to um, BSJ to get tested, because I have done that. Yeah, you... The trace and microbial content that sort of thing is that just a voluntary thing or is it an expected thing okay great question so if you do honey like it's natural sense and you do infuse honey those are two separate products as a matter of fact i take it a little bit further if you do cherry syrup even if you use the same base and you're using the and you put a pineapple and you do pineapple from the same base that's considered two separate products one is cherry flavored syrup, one is pineapple flavored syrup, because there are different ingredients that goes inside that product. 
But back to what you speak about your your um your taking your product to be tested. It is always good for you to take your product in to see um, what's happening to your product, how your product is performing as it relates to the microbial analysis and even your chemical analysis. So it's good to take your products in to get them um, tested. I trust that I've answered your question. I was just saying, just, I'm just clarifying, but it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement question. in terms of under the, the law? Yes. Okay, then. So the in terms of the requirement, in terms of taking for testing, I, can, I can't recall anything under the JS36 um, that speaks specifically that you must send your products to be tested. Great, thank you. All right, no problem. Okay, I'm seeing some, some questions in the chat. Um, let me just go through them kindly, everyone. Um, Jamaica has one standard for labeling. Australia have another. Does that mean I have to have two sets of label? Um, that, that, that will depend on you. Um, that will depend on the, your, your establishment or the decision by um, your company. Some persons have in, um, export labels. Some persons have... have um, um, local labels, some persons do, but some persons have one where they have found unique ways of incorporating um, both requirements on one label. So, so you can you will have to decide that internally. Next one, would you be penalized if your batch code is still out there on the market with the all uh, No, no, I don't think you will be you will be penalized. Um, um, for that, from once your product is not um, um, expired, you, you, you can't be penalized um, for that. As it relates to trade secret, how does one treat that with label? Um, we, well, on the label, you are not putting, um, there's nothing that speaks about trade secret on the CRS-5. You just have um, requirements that you ought to follow. Um, and I know you may be specifically speaking about your uh, your your ingredients. It doesn't speak about the net um, the the quantity of your ingredients. It should be in descending order from the highest quantity to the lowest amount. But you it won't be specific to tell you that okay if you are doing this you are putting in two ounces of spices or you're putting three pounds of escalion or to meet, no, it doesn't give you all of all of that. You, well, I should say it doesn't. You don't. You don't have to provide all of that. What it is saying is that you have to have it in descending order. All right. The final one that I'm seeing there. Further to my question, I want clarification that the label assessment prior to registration is necessary for manufacturing that a product for raw food that is sold in bulk or other manufacturer and is not necessarily for the retail sense. Yeah. Um, trying to understand these questions, the clarification assessment prior to the assessment. All right, I will say to you, um, it's always good to have your labels assessed, um, assessed before, so you can you can have um, a good label assessment report um, for it to 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 be analyzed. Especially if you're going to do nutritional facts, it will be good for you to get your products um, analyzed and the labels um, assessed to ensure that you are in compliance with the relevant um, standards or regulation. Uh, I trust that that will as, um, as assist your question, Stevens. Um, the next one, you mentioned popping up um, inspection. If you use your own for production, one will be notified, right? Well, again, yes, you'll be notified. Um, the inspectors generally make contact with their um, establishment um, before, prior to going there to conduct an inspection. The thing about it is that you do have persons who you try to make contact with and uh, there's no response. Um, so they do not respond to your email, they don't respond to your, 
to your to your telephone calls so you have to do a pop-up if i may add to that the law says an inspector may enter at any time any reasonable time i should say so it didn't specify that we should make um phone calls however based on the nature and uh, of how we operate here in Jamaica, we do make calls and make arrangement to conduct um, inspection. As a matter of fact, it actually saves us time and also money when we make arrangements to, to do the, the inspection. Okay. Um, um, how long does it take to be registered after the assessment? Oh, you mean, uh, you mean how, long, uh, how long does it take to to get the certificate. Well, if you are recommended for registration, um, 15 work within 15 working days, your certificate of registration um, should be prepared, or should I say shall. <laughs> um, you, you, your certificate should be ready by 15 working days. Um, but if it, if, if, it, if, it, if, I, if I may add here, if it goes over the one hour and you are bill, you are expected to pay for that, uh, remaining amount of time that was spent and then the certificate would be issued to you so to answer your question after it's approximately uh, not approximately 15 working days your certificate should be ready and if i may adhere to that there's no um fast track um, process not yet we're trying to work on that one okay all right thanks again for the questions in the chat I trust that I've answered your questions. If not, you may pose them again and I will try and not try, I will make clarification. All right, we're moving on to the enforcement um, program that we have and the penalties. And I don't like to go into this one. I don't like when I have to go down this route because again, it's more time and time is money for both you and the institution. NCRA, because it now takes more time to be looking at it. We now have to do further analysis of your product, et cetera, et cetera. So I took these out of the standard to show you clearly the, the, the enforcement actions that we have. And we have four, not gonna be four. So we have withdrawal, we have detention, seizure, and condemnation. I'm making it clear to everyone that we have four enforcement action that we can take. So as you can see, the Bureau may order withdrawal of a commodity. So if anyone offers for sale any commodity, A, which does not conform to a compulsory standard specification relating to that commodity, I'll just move on. The Bureau may by notice in writing require that person to withdraw that commodity from sale within such periods, period as the notice shall specify. So we can withdraw your products from sale. So it's, if it's being offered for sale in any retail outlet, it can be withdrawn from sale. Seizure and detention is posing one here. We are a person. So if you have your product out there on the market and we issue you with a notice of withdrawal, and you fail to comply with that notice. If you refuse for that notice, a commodity within a specified time of the notice, the inspector may seize and detain such commodity. I'm guiding you that do not like to reach these stages, but if we ask you if it's been offered for sale and you fail to comply with that notice, then we can go further of detaining and seizing that commodity and that commodity also include your processed food whether it's manufactured locally or it is imported more enforcement action so on the j36 and if i may add the one before that this one came under our standards regulation of 1983 so that's came under the standards regulation the JS 36 gives a provision that if you are actually operating, we can go straight detention. So if we see your product um, that is being prepared, processed, manufactured, or stored at your establishment, or even at the ports of entry, we can detain that product once it is not in compliance with 
the JS-36. So if you are operating without a valid certificate of registration, your products can be detained. Let's make it clear. If you are processing without a valid certificate of registration, your products can be detained under, under clause 5.3 of JS 36. So that's another detention. We also can go straight condemnation. And condemn means that your product cannot be rehabilitated at all. So under the standards regulation 11D, say a commodity which fails to satisfy the compulsory standard specification may be condemned by an inspector who will give notice in writing of such condemnation to the owner of that commodity. So if you breach any standard specification, remember the ones that I show you um, before, that I showed before on the slides, if you breach any of those, the inspector can go ahead and condemn your product. We do not want it to reach this far. So we are encouraging everyone to go ahead and have your establishment registered. Moving on, just, just to highlight what I've just said. So we can withdraw your commodity from sale. We can detain your commodity. We can seize and we can content, uh, condemn such commodity. The, the minister also um, can, under the Processed Food Act, can seize um, production. So if we're going through and we recognize that you are not doing what you're supposed to do, we can send the information to it and the minister has the power to ask it to seize um, production. You can also be fined. So if you read the standards, no, you know, they might tell you that you can be fined like a um, um, thousand dollars or somewhere there about other man. But those are amended and the fines move up to $3 million. And you can be sentenced to 12 months in prison and also you can be both fine and sentenced, depending on the situation. We do not want all of this to reach thus far, and I'm repeating myself, to ensure that you, your establishment is registered. Um, in terms of part of our uh, enforcement program, the last um, fiscal year, um, we withdrew a total of uh, just over about 59,000 units um, of products from different categories. So it's not just food alone, but from different categories. Um, we, we local detention, we detain um, one category of food at a local processors. We still have not calculated the other categories, but we didn't seize or condemn any product the last um, fiscal year. Um, and that ends in March of, of this year, but we have done, um, sorry, some amount of enforcement action since the start of this um, fiscal year, but I do not have the total amount uh, with me to share with you. We do not want your product to end up in these categories. So again, kindly ensure that you are registered. Um, also, you might see, you might have seen this um, in April of this year where the NCRA removes, um, you know, substandard good value in at about $9 million from out the market. And we basically come to the end of the presentation and I will ask the question now, are you now in the know? So do you, do you understand um, the way in which you, you should um, apply? Um, do you understand how to fill those application form out? Do you understand uh, uh, what we look for whenever we conduct in our inspections? Do you now understand what should be on your label or the main things that should be on your label? Do you now understand um, the enforcement actions that can be, can be taken against you? Can you now answer the questions that were posed um, in the pre 
quiz. Are you now in the know? For further information, you can visit our website at www.ncra.org.jm. You can also email us at info at ncra.org.jm. We do, we are on WhatsApp. So it's 876-289-NCRA, This is 6275. And we are on social media platforms, Facebook, we are LinkedIn, and we are on Instagram and Twitter. So you can go find us, um, like, you can share. If it's to subscribe, anything that you have to do to follow us, go ahead and follow us. Yes. So I will repeat the, the, um, the WhatsApp. It's 876 289 6272. We are we have different locations, so it depends on where you are located. We have the head office, which is 19 Hope Road, and we have four regional offices, as you can see on your screen, um, which is Montego Bay, Manival, Ochi, and Savannah Lamar. Um, so depending on where you're, you're at, you can go there and you can get additional information. Or if you want um, additional information, you can come to our library which is called the Dr. Hartnell Henry Standards and Technical Information Center. Uh, you can come there, you can read the standards, you can purchase the standard, any, anything of your choice. So that is if you want um, additional information. I've come to the end of my presentation. Um, again, I will ask the question, are you now in the know? You have a question in the chat. I think it's the last question. Do I need to register my product if it is made by another facility that is already registered? Okay. Um, again, we 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 do not register products. We register establishment. If your product is in a facility that is already registered and they're doing everything on your behalf, we consider that as contract packing. So the answer is no. Are there any further questions? Thank you, DJ Taylor. WhatsApp number, please. Oh, I think I did respond to that. All right, thank you, Walters. Um, if there are any other questions, again, you can feel free to contact us, ask us the questions because the clearer you are, the better we are um, to, oh. deal with, to deal with your, your, your queries and your concerns. Someone still asking about the WhatsApp number? Yes. I'll put it up back on screen. I don't know, are you seeing it? It is 876-289-6272. Korean, type it in the chat for me. Okay. There she go. Thank you. Thank you, Korean. All right. I trust that you have learned something. I see somebody's hand up. Johnson. Okay, good morning. Thanks for taking this question. I wanted you to expound on the contract packaging because I am going to be using somewhere that is registered. Mm -hmm. But... I will do the manufacturing. So what steps do I need to take in that instance? Okay, so you, you, the person is already registered, but you are doing the manufacturing? Yes. Okay, then. So if they are registered and you are going physically to do the, the, the manufacturing, then yes. yeah, you ought to be registered um, with us. So you need to fill out your application okay. and an inspector will come, come back and, and, and conduct, comes and, and, and conduct an inspection. When I speak about contract packing, I'm speaking about if the, if, if the company is doing everything for you. So they are manufacturing for you, they are putting on your label. You no, know, you oh. don't need to be registered. Okay, all right, thank yeah. you. Because you, we would have gone there and the application should have the product and it also has the the brand on it and we would have gone there would have more than likely go, um, gone to the establishment and see your product being manufactured okay thanks again for your questions 
Um, if there be no more questions, I'd like to say thank you for your, your attention. I see that 84 persons are still here, which mean I didn't bore them for them to get off the, the, the platform. So it's back over to you, uh, Ms. Fagan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Clark, for that very informative um, presentation. So just to, just to reiterate, Mr. Clark would have mentioned that you may um, view the standards here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. We have our library, our technical information center. So you do have the option, you may come in and you may view these standards or any other standards free of cost. Um, but if you wish, of course, to utilize it, utilize the standards, then they are available at a cost. And so we do provide that um, sort of value added service. In addition to that, if it is that you come and you want to view the particular standards and you may not be quite understanding the standard, we also have our technical officers through our client services program they're here to assist, they're here to guide, they are here to provide whatever um, help you may require or guidance direction that you may require. So we do have our technical officers and they are here to provide that one-on-one -on -one sort of um, engagement, if you will. And so that, that option is available to you. And then you may um, purchase the standards as well. We will provide the information in terms of the, the cost and, and just to say, we're going to be, um, I'm going to speak because of the time factor. So Mr. Clark, if you may stop sharing and we're going to launch our um, post poll or quiz, if you will. So remember earlier in the session, you would have very short, four questions, four questions. And you all did, most of you did very well with those four questions. We're going to be putting up back those same questions in our post evaluation and then subsequent to that, we're going to be having our evaluation sheet so you can then um, make an input in terms of how you how you saw the session, what can we do better, that sort of thing. So we do just want you to indulge us a little bit further. We're almost at the end. So we're going to be launching the post, um, evalu post evaluation or, or quiz, if you will, the one that was shared earlier. So you'll see that pop up shortly. And we want to have um in the high 80s in terms of the participation we have 70 high 70s the last time so know that you would have had the benefits of that very informative presentation by mr clark so i know i i do know know that you would be you will be in the 100 percent in terms of your your knowledge so we invite you to participate in the poll that is on screen now that will really help us and then we're going to have our evaluation um, thereafter so while you while you complete that let me just say that um you know i, I heard a question earlier in terms of the testing you know person one person may, would have communicated um that they would have engaged the testing services of the bureau standards so just to say in business and of course many of you would have would have already recognized this, but I'm just reiterating, you know, in this conversation, just to say, it is always a good thing to have a sort of uh, an integrated approach, if you will. And so outside of a uh, legal requirement, because you want to ensure that you are putting out there a quality product. You want to ensure that you are engaging with your, your customers. You want to have your customers um, being satisfied with your product. So outside of a regulatory requirement, it, it is incumbent on you as, as business operators to really seek to put your best foot forward. So, and in doing that, there are many resources that are out there that are available to you. And may I just say, may I just add that we really would want you to consider the Bureau of Standards Jamaica as one of those resources, as, a, as one of your, your quality assurance resource, if you will. You know, we want you to consider um, the BSG in that in that light, because you may have over the years, as we would have outlined earlier, you would have associated the bureau with the regulatory function, which now resides with the, the NCRA. We are now operating as facilitators, as a facilitator. And so um, you really have the benefit of um, acquiring all the 
or most, if, if you will, that most of the, the resources that you may require. So we do have our training arm, which is the Quality Institute. So you are food manufacturers. We have a number of training programs that you may want to consider. We have good manufacturing practices. We have, we have HACCP. We have our, outside of the Quality Institute, we have the industry slash client support programs that we mentioned earlier. We have our food safety modernization secretariat. So you may have a, a, a dream or a desire to export your product um, to the US or European market. And you may want to, you may want information in terms of what is required. So we have our industry support program. We have the food safety modernization secretariat. So you may have, you, you may get information there in terms of what is required by the the FDA um, to enter the US market or the European market. So that information can be had here at the, the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. Many persons may not have re recognized that. So we're adding additional, we're, we're giving you a value added presentation. So you would have had the benefit of what you would have um, come here for today in Mr. Clark's um, presentation. So I am just giving you additional information and just a little a little food for thought, you know. So again, um, consider the, the BSG as your quality assurance partner. We have um, in business as well, you know, we have the quality management system um, for um, program training program that is also offered um, by the, the Quality Institute. So, all right, so the poll would have been taken down now. All right, great. I, I'm wondering what the percentage is. If my team will inform me, what was the percentage now in terms of participation? I'm, I'm seeing where Mr. Clark has his hand up. Oh, Mr. Clark. Okay, Mr. Clark, you're, you're going to chime in. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. All right, then. Thank you very much. And sorry to interrupt your post um, quiz. Uh, a question that came to me a while ago is if an inspector must take um, a sample whenever they conduct an inspection. Uh, the, the regulation allows an inspector based on their, what we consider as a professional judgment to make a determination if, an is, if, if a sample needs to be taken. So to answer the question, um, yes, an inspector can take a sample of your product if um, once they conduct an inspection at your facility. Just to add that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Clark. All right. Is there anything I need to check in the chat? Uh, okay. All right. So we I we have sessions coming up. Free cosmetics. So there's a question in relation to if we have other sessions coming up outside of food dealing with food and the answer to that is that yes, we have other sessions coming up. We should be looking at the cosmetic industry. And again, if there is an, I mean, once the information comes to us, we would have had some subject matters identified in terms of the, the sort of sessions that we want to execute. But of course, if information comes to us that there is a need to focus on a particular area as facilitator, then we will in fact, we will indeed seek to um, to see how best we can facilitate to have those ses those sessions, sorry, um, executed. All right, so we're gonna the evaluation. We're gonna have you. We're gonna post the evaluation now, and we ask your indulgence a little bit longer uh, because we want to in doing the other sessions and going forward and to inform how well we would have done here today. We ask that you complete the evaluation form because this really does help us in putting these sessions together and to guide how we put session, other sessions going forward, how we put together other sessions going forward. So we really do appreciate your input and we want to have high participation here because this is how we can in fact uh, make these sessions better to improve on our presentation, the time, etc. And so it really does help us. So we really, really, really um, we're asking for you to make an input here because it is really going to go a far way 
in helping us to execute other sessions such as these and to make them even better. But that's the point of doing this. You know, we want to consistently improve our presentation. We want to um, ensure that we are in fact engaging, you know, and we want to, when we leave this, this forum, would have had the satisfaction that, you know, are you now in the know? Have you benefited from the information that we would have presented? Because that's the point of us doing this. And again, if you have any, any further questions, then please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we will make the presentation available to you um, after. Um, we'll be sending out those um, and the recording as well may be made available to you. So please complete the form on screen. It's only four questions. And again, I'm reiterating that it really does help us when you um, provide such input. All right, so I'm giving you two more minutes before you leave us and just to close thereafter. Okay. All right. So while you while you complete that, um, just to just in closing, just to reiterate, so you would have had the information presented by Mr. Clark and the various aspects of what is required for registration. Um, it's really important as business operators that you, you foster a, 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 an atmosphere of trust in your customers and um, being registered, you know, going through these processes, that's a part of you um, fostering trust in your, um, yeah, your customers will in fact know that your establishment is one that can be trusted. Uh, it also inspires confidence in your product. And so these are the very important why as to why you are um, here today. Why is it that you need to, to do what is necessary by taking that step in having your um, registration done of your establishment. And so um, just to, to, to close today and before I go further, Sorry. I wanna thank, I have a question. Is there a question? I see where Sharika Sasha Knight has her hand up. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Sasha Ned, go ahead. Thank you so much, Ms. Fagan. I just wanted to add my voice to say fantastic presentation to Mr. Clark. The information is absolutely clear, and I'm happy that we have had this session to share with our persons online. But I just also wanted to reiterate something that you had said earlier regarding persons who may be interested in sending their products to markets outside of Jamaica. And just to impress upon how important it is to just ensure that you have the information that you would need before you um, attempt to send products to the US. And so I just wanted to again reiterate that the Bureau of Standards through the Food Safety Modernization Branch and through the Regional and International Trade Branch um, is able to provide market access information to persons who are so interested. And so, uh, Ms. Fagan, you already mentioned that, but I just wanted to impress upon persons, if you are interested in sending food to markets outside of Jamaica, it is absolutely important that you get the information that is necessary for that process. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and Mrs. Knight, she heads that branch, the Food Safety Modernization Secretariat here at the, the PSG. She's the head of that, uh, that branch. All right, so while you complete the poll, again, I encourage you to make your input. We really do appreciate it. I want to extend a very big thank you to the team because in putting these things together, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort. You would have had persons who would have been at the forefront leading. And so I just want to, to recognize the team. But first, let me thank the, our presenter, our presenter, Mr. Lenworth Clark, thank you so much, Mr. Clark, for the presentation you made here today. We have had the feedback that it was very clear and, and very, you know, very informative. And so we really do thank you um, for making yourself available and sharing the very valuable information that you would have um, imparted to the audience here today. 
I must extend a very big thank you to our chief organizer of this event, Mr. Ellis Ling, our public education and customer service coordinator here at the BSJ. So thank you so much, Mr. Ling, for all your efforts in being the chief organizer of this event. I, I, I'm speaking on behalf of the audience, but I'm sure you would um, echo the fact that it was in fact very well put together and very informative, which is the goal, which, is, which was our objective in um, executing this session here today. Thank you also to our support team, our Mr. Orin Wallace. He's our marketing and public relations officer here in the communication and customer service branch. We have other team members as well in the communication and uh, communication Communi communication and customer service branch. Ms. Saskia McDonald and other members who, who would have um, participated. We also have Rochelle Brown, of course, our admin assistant who was there, you know, driving and pushing and ensuring that we all do what we're supposed to do. So a big thank you to the team and also Mr. Patterson, we would have engaged with Mr. Aquino Patterson, who is the coordinator of our client services program. I did mention the program earlier and the fact that we do have our technical officers who are able to engage with you in that one-on-one -on -one capacity. So if you need further information, as I said before, in understanding the standard or just to get general guidance or direction, then we, we invite you to engage with us and then we can we can engage further in our client services program. I'm seeing a hand from Mrs. Sonia Morgan. She heads the Quality Institute here at the BSJ. Mrs. Morgan, you may go ahead. Good morning, Maxine and NCRA and BSJ colleagues and all of the attendees on the platform. I'd like to verbally state, because I wrote it, but I'd like to state Lenworth, uh, did it again. This is the customary standard of his presentations and today was equally excellent. I'd like to say to our uh, persons from industry that I encourage you, whilst you can get the information through our technical information center that is um, managed by Maxine, and whilst you can get um, information and service and guidance through client services program, I'd like to encourage you to call us at the Quality Institute because we want you to have more than information and we want you to know how and to fully understand the implications of your business so that you can do your best business, put your best foot forward for success and prosperity. And the way to do that is for you to have full understanding of the standards, guidelines, and so on that control your business. So please call us to at the Quality Institute, ask for Tyreen Douglas or Miss Michelle Taylor, or for me, Sonia Morgan, we are here to serve you. Thank you so much for that, um, Mrs. Morgan. And the Quality Institute, I did mention earlier, but that is the, that's the training arm of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. So as food manufacturers, as I said, there are several programs that you may engage with. Um, such as good manufacturing practices, HACCP. Um, we, in, we invite you to visit our website, www.bsj.org.jm, and you may you'll see detailed information regarding the Quality Institute and the various training programs that they have to offer. In thanking the team earlier, I, I omitted Ms. Faith McCoy, who was also a part of the team in terms of the organization and execution of this um, presentation. So um, it was remiss of me to do so. So Ms. McCoy, thank you so much for your efforts. And at this point in time, uh, we have come to the end of this presentation. So again, I just want to thank all the persons on the platform who would have taken the time to be here with us today. We do value your time, your most precious um, commodities, which is time. And so we really do appreciate the fact that you have stayed online with us this long and you would have been um, very much informed by the presentation that would have occurred here today. As I said before, we will be having other sessions and we'll be, we'll be extending invitations to you. So if it is that you wish to join us when we tackle another subject matter, if you will, or if it is that you want to share with your network, 
and we invite you to do so because as as a facilitator of business development and trade as your national standards body we are here to serve we are here to engage we are here to guide we are here to facilitate and so as i said before we really want you to consider the bsg as your quality assurance partner in many respects it's like a one-stop shop if you will it sounds cliche but there are, as i said before we offer over 200 services so please consider us as a resource, engage with us. We are here to serve you. Because as, as it says in our tagline, making standards work for you. So it's you and you and you and all the yous out there. All right, so thank you so much again. I'm gonna bid you good morning, enjoy your lunch. And again, thank you for engaging with us here today in our um, hotspot, information hotspot, if you will, with this presentation. Thank you so much.